Hey folks, welcome back to Real Estate Excellence Podcast. Today I have an entrepreneur in the studio with me. From the first time I met this agent and, and home flipper, experienced home flipper, I saw a focused and motivated up and coming superstar in the real estate uh, business here in Northeast Florida. He has flipped 25 homes now, so I think I can say that he's an experienced flipper. I am hoping he could share some of that successes and challenges with us today. Best of the best in flipping is our topic, and I want to welcome Avin, Alan Levinson of Roundtable Realty to the show. Alan, Thanks for having me. thank you. I'm, I'm so honored to have you on, and, and uh, you know, ever since uh, uh, our good friend Brett introduced us, um, I, I always felt, Alan, that you were, you were very focused on what you wanted to do. You didn't always divulge everything you wanted to do, but I could tell <laughs> inside you, you had a focus and you weren't going to let anyone, you know, get in your way. And uh, I really want to dig in today uh, because, you know, flipping homes, everyone's seeing it on television. Everyone thinks they can do it. It's, uh, it's you know, no brainer. And uh, we, I want to dig in a little bit. You've flipped enough homes that I'm sure you've done some things you hope never to do again. Mm -hmm. And obviously experienced some things that you run with on every flip you know, uh, from that experience, but let's, uh, I want to first, uh, shout out to our sponsors, stage to sell, um, stagers. They put the, the studio together for us, the artwork, the furniture here, stage to sell realty. I want to thank them for that. They're full service stager. I have a huge warehouse here on Phillips highway in Jacksonville, uh, to, uh, do a full consultation and uh, whether it's a 10,000 square foot home or you got your little 1,900 square foot, three bedroom, two bath, they can make it look great and uh, obviously help you get top dollar. And I'm sure Alan could share with you the importance of, of staging can really uh, aid in, in making sure you get top dollar in your sales. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, Alan, let's, let's uh, go back a little bit. Where, where are you from? Where'd you go to high school? So, I'm from uh, Fort Lauderdale originally, South Florida. Um, I went to high school at North Broward Prep, um, went to college uh, in Fort Myers at Florida Gulf Coast University. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be a lawyer. That's what everybody in my family, they're all lawyers. So <laughs> all I had to do is go to law school. And right. so that's what brought me to Jacksonville in 2014 and uh, did one semester and was like, this is not for me, but I had a, a lease that went through the, the end of the year. So I figured... And I also had met my uh, now wife, girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. not even girlfriend. It was just a girl I, I knew you, in law school. I'm like, you I wanted to be your wife. I, I wanted, to be <laughs> wife. Uh, but I, I said, I need to figure out a way to stay just through the end of the year. And my parents weren't going to do that unless I could, you know, make some money. So I, I said, let me try real estate. And that's what kind of led me to get my license. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So you're, you're at what, 23 years old right now? No, I mean, no, that, no, I mean, not at, now. At, I mean, that, at time. that point I was, yeah, 20. 23. Yeah. Wow. And because real estate would give you that entrepreneur, you know, that freedom yeah. and, and obviously has a low entry. I mean, pass the test. You it's, figured you could do that. It was something I can do. And, you know, I think it was like a two or three week course. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best test taker. So I, I, I thought it was something that I could, you know, I could do enough times that I could pass. Right. And really, I just wanted to have a get into business. I thought law was that avenue. And it turned out that I didn't care what the avent like what the vehicle was, but it was the business behind it. And then I fell in love with the real estate after that, mm -hmm. you know, way after that. Once I got the license and figured it out, but yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. You dove right in, so because you didn't have any relatives that were real, no one, no, no one that no one really significant that you could feed off of. No, not at all. You no, just no. saw the opportunity. Of course, at, at twenty three, you can do things like that. Yeah, <laughs> and, you, I mean, it was a time to take risks, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because I had no overhead essentially at that time. So I said, "Why let's try it?" Because mm -hmm. you know? my, my one of my first questions here, I said, "What was your first possible career job?" Well, I guess that was law. <laughs> yeah, I had that was like, your thought of that yeah, career, yeah. but really For career stuff. It, it really would would be realistic. I did little things, before, you know, in college, but career stuff. The first actual stuff. career job yeah. was was very rare. But taking was, that test and, yeah. and and going. So um, you're with round. Were you have you been with Roundtable Realty mm -hmm. your whole time, or were, not, how did you not come up time. with Howard and? Uh, so I got licensed and uh, I didn't didn't know where to go or you know how to get leads. So I joined a team, mm -hmm. which I actually recommend if you if you're in that position. Um, joined the team at Keller Williams. Did that for like maybe a year, and then uh, went off with my partner at that time, uh, Cody. We we met at that team and mm -hmm. that we basically just started doing our own sales at Keller Williams, um, and then 
we did a deal with Howard eventually and right. became friends, and then I moved over there. Howard Flash and broker, uh, very popular at Roundtable Realty, mm-hmm. uh, and he recruited you over. That that's that's so interesting. Oh, that that um, you know, I don't know if you want. I just wanted to use the word, you know, the the guts to do that as as a young person, um, and and then now you you stuck with it. So how many years now you you've how many where are you at now? Are you thirty yet? I, I'm thirty one. Yeah. Thirty one. So wow. 31, so eight actually, yeah. years now. Yeah. yeah. And you That's dove crazy. into you know somewhat of a road less traveled because I, I think the average, although I've met other you know young people who mm-hmm. have graduated from college and gotten into real estate, but I kind of felt like they just well let, let me just do that because they have uh, another source maybe their parents are supporting them or right. whatever like that yeah but yeah. to dive like right in because you had that entrepreneurial spirit in you yeah. and you saw that as the you know the, the real estate to be that entrepreneur uh and then now now cody your partner mm-hmm. um I, it seems like you guys because you guys do the flips together not anymore. Not so anymore. He's okay. still doing flips, but we, we kind of just do them. You know, he does them with his family, and I'll I'll do them. A lot. Mm-hmm. I will still do one. But kind of, you guys see eye to eye a lot. Oh yeah. So you were yeah. working off of each other and had yeah. that partner to kind of lean on a little bit yep. in, in getting going. Wow, that's interesting. Um, so Howard's probably going to listen to this. <laughs> so what is the real reason why you made that jump from Killer Williams to Roundtable? What was Roundtable offering you that you thought was the ticket? So I had no intention of leaving because at that point we were we had enough. You, you get a lot of transaction experience on a team. That's mm-hmm. one of the benefits. So I didn't really need too much. I didn't think, you know, I didn't think I needed too much. That we uh, met Howard, um, became just friendly for a while. It mm-hmm. wasn't like a hard push. Just became friendly, and uh, I started going to him for advice and and for, you know asking him, picking his brain. And then finally I was like, you know, why don't I just go over there? It's right. If everything's con- like, why not? And then right. uh, best move I made, though, honestly, because there's nobody more supportive than you know Keith and Howard. Like, I mean, you can get them twenty four seven. Literally, it's it's. Um, and then, and then he and we talked about that when he had was on the show. I, yeah. I would I would say just listening to that story, it sounds like Howard was more kind of feeling you out too a little bit to see, you know, are you sticking with this? Yeah. What's your level? Because he he. Uh, puts out there that he just doesn't hire anyone or not hire, you're not really hired. I mean, he doesn't allow anyone Anybody just to be on. part of his team because of how small and boutique it is. Mm-hmm. They don't have the platforms that some of the bigger companies have where they can just run them. They it's him training. Yeah. It's Keith ordering the paper. So they have to, you know, they're going to invest in you. They want to make sure that, you know, you're somebody that is not necessarily have a lot of experience, but like-minded and mm-hmm. they're going to work with and want to work with because they're the ones doing it. And, and in a positive way, take advantage of his knowledge because he oh, yeah. wants to share it with you. Absolutely. He very much does want to share it. Now he's a great teacher. So when does the, um, or was this always there from the real yeah. estate side in a sense of uh, the, the flipping? When does this yeah. become something and when do you start looking at your first flip here? So when I got licensed, my my thought was not to be a realtor. That wasn't like I, I didn't know how exactly I was going to make money doing it, but I, investing was what I envisioned. Mm-hmm. And then I found the sales stuff just by I was like, well, I can do this to make money. You right. know, I can just become a sales agent. Um, so for about a year and a half, I, that's what I did was the sales stuff. Basically worked on that team, and then in 2016 is when I flipped the first home. And uh, basically since then, you know, kind of some years more, some years less, some years I'll hold some selling later but that 2016 was the the first year i did it my wife and i got married in in may of 08 Mm -hmm. we were in little rock arkansas at the time um i was working remotely um she was working for altel which obviously got bought out for verizon and their big corporate office was there so we go and we buy um uh, a hud home Mm-hmm. It had been on the market for a while uh, because initially they want to sell it to a primary residence. Right, we're, right. we're investing it and had all intentions of flipping it. And, um, you know, we don't, we've never done this before. We're right. like, yeah, you know, the, we don't have the house inspected. It does say the HUD yeah. report says something about a water leak. I'm like, yeah, whatever, right? No, no big deal. Turns out, you know, this house is like Florida. It's on, it's on a slab. Yep. And um, so we come in. We go in and we um, remove the nasty carpet because the place was just, it was, I mean, it wasn't, 
it had nasty car. I wouldn't say the house was nasty, but the house it was older, nineteen yeah. seventies, had the green, yeah, olive green yeah, yeah, cabinets yeah. and all that that's jazz. A great property, we, man. We, yeah, yeah we tear out yeah. We tear out the carpets first thing. That's the easiest thing to do, yeah. right? Cut out the carpet. Boom. Yeah. We come in one day to, to work on it and there's a big puddle of water in the middle of the oh, living no. room. Yeah. And well, we already noticed that there was a like this concrete patching going on yeah. <laughs> there. Turned out the water leak was a line that went from one end of the house to the other end where the master bedroom was to the master wow. bedroom uh, bathroom. Luckily, and uh, uh, it's a, another story for another time. Luckily, through just some trial and error, turning the water on, we found out. I think I, I think it was the hot water line um, had a leak on it. Cold water line, no problem. Yeah, you know, uh, there because we shut the water off with the hot water heater, no problem. And so we we ended up rerouting it, you know, up into the attic and you know insulated the the line and brought it back down in the bathroom. So right. luckily, was, you know, a few hundred bucks, whatever, oh, yeah. and we solved that problem. That could have been a major yeah. disaster. And then trying to dig into the slab, uh, oh my mess, god! Yeah. So I want to hear, you know, you, we unfortunately don't have time to talk about every flip you had. But give us, give us some, uh, I know you've had some horror stories and then we'll talk about the, we'll finish with the positive, Yeah. but okay. t- t- give us some of yeah. the things that like you went in and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Or I'm sure yeah. you've probably lost money on a home or two. Yeah. Well, so uh, if I want to lose money, I still own it. It becomes mm, a rental. Right. So I haven't lost money, but there's properties that I intended to flip that I still own. Those are my worst flips. <laughs> so it's kind of a strategy I use where it's like, yeah. And also, and we can get into this, but like a lot of, you know, obviously I don't just have a ton of cash. So I use, you know, a lot of private money lenders. So it helps to have a plan B and make sure, you know, then you, you can really make it pretty much, uh, you're not going to lose money. You might have to wait for your money. Uh, so that's, but yeah, there's definitely been uh, horror mm-hmm. stories, ACs getting stolen, break-ins. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, th- I mean, that happens, you know, and the, having a vacant house, there's, a, there, it's things that happen and not only in, you know, in all different areas, not even, you know, in areas where you would assume that would, it's all over. Um, uh, tenants that didn't want to move, you know, and I haven't had to do an eviction, but a lot of cash for keys. Um, I had the whole, you know, basically like the whole staff of Waffle House literally living in one house that I bought, uh, that I didn't know that when I got there and they, it was like literally everyone that worked at Waffle House was just hoarding in this house. Like it was the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Uh, so you know, they, uh, it worked out. But I mean, just, just you do run into like it's fun. Cash it's, for you, keys. If everyone understands that, he basically yeah. is paying them to move out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you can, I, you know, you can pay for an eviction, or you can give it to them and they move out. It's typically a lot quicker when you, you know, if they're going to go themselves. Yeah. So um, yeah, all sorts of things. But, um, but overall, I, on the fun. house that I we flipped, the actual um, electric meter was stolen off the house because. Yeah. Um, it was shut off. Their meter was shut off, so they went and stole the meter off this house so they could use it on on their new house. And then I don't know how whatever they tracked that, whatever, but luckily we had someone at the... um, uh, a good friend that worked at the power company. He was a senior guy. He came over and and got the house all hooked up and didn't cost us that, you know, having to put that together. How'd you do on the house? Was it a flip or you hold it as a rental? Um, No, we 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 ended up selling it... um, Probably eight, nine months later, okay. at least, uh, may have been, may have been, may have reached a year. Um, we w- we used it more as a tax deduction. Mm-hmm. Both of us were making making you know good money. So what we spent on the house and you know, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah we did that to us. So it wasn't like hey we we bought it for a hundred, sold it for seventy five, and you know put twenty in our yeah. pocket type of thing. But after we went through all the bills and all the things that we spent on it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hey, we, we, we had a learning lesson yeah. and yeah. Um, we got a dis, you know, discounted our taxes yeah, with Uncle that's Sam. Another, that's another strategy. Yeah, there's, yeah. That's, that's a strategy. Too. Yeah, so. uh, from that standpoint. But so when you go and evaluate a home, mm-hmm. now are you actively searching or you got people feeding you? How, how are you finding? In this market, all sort, any any and all ways you can. So I, mm-hmm. I do look for my own deals. Um, I also partner a lot on deals. So they, they'll bring me a deal sometimes. I'll bring the money or I can bring the contacts or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so it, all different ways, but there, you can still get them on the market, right? There's, you know, homes that you'll see that are distressed in nature. People, you know, typical buyers can't get financing maybe. You can still get them on the market. It's right. been tougher, obviously, in the last two, three years when everything gets multiple offers, no matter what it is, really. Right. Um, you can also get it from uh, going direct to the seller, you know, like people that need, 
in a position where they, they can't put it on the market or don't want to put it on the market, need quick sales, uh, tax issues, condition issues, uh, mm -hmm. inheritances is a big one too. Right. Like people that don't want to deal with the market and fix up the house. Um, so always, you know, but all, all different ways. Now, I know you've been, the last time we spoke, I mean, you were kind of working in a, a, a certain area of town. Yeah. Are you looking to expand out, especially as the uh, Jackson, greater northeast Florida, I should say, you know, the expressway connects over mm -hmm. the river and so forth, looking out at some of those older areas like Green Cove and Palatka? Yeah. Are you kind of, you, you're wide open? Oh, yeah. Just put one under contract, actually, in Green Cove, which will be the first one. But, yeah, open all areas. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked the Murray Hill area for rentals, so I was keeping a lot of them there. I've sold a lot of them because the market, since we last spoke, has gone through the roof. Right. So I've sold a lot of them just because of the timing and, and you know, kind of to re-gear. Um, but all over. Uh, Jacksonville, I think, is just a great market even to get stuck with a property. Right. I really, I mean, there's a ton of new construction. Yep. We work with a, with a large builder here, but there's a also – a lot of, you know, older homes that were built in yeah. the, you know, post-World War II, 50, yeah. 60. Green Cove Springs, if those who on air don't know it or those locally have never been to Green Cove Springs, uh, I was told by someone who's lived there a very long time uh, that, you know, they considered uh, um, Green Cove Springs post-World War II the Detroit of the South. Wow. Because the Navy was discharging the sailors there <laughs> and they were buying Ford automobiles and driving them home. Interesting. And um, so, and then, of course, obviously, you go way back, Green Cove was a heyday when the uh, railroad was, um, I'm sorry, the steam the steamboats were, because mm -hmm. they'd go down the St. John's River. Right. Uh, then when the railroad, Flagler put the railroad in, it bypassed Green Cove. So it went through. So yeah. it's had its heyday a couple of times. I, I think that. Green Cove Springs and Palatka, are in the next decade are going to truly explode. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of open yeah. land out there, inexpensive uh, from the standpoint of buying a reasonably priced home versus obviously St. John's now yeah. is outpriced, uh, you know, for the average person uh, type thing. So, yeah, it, so there's a lot of older homes out there that can really um, – uh, I had I had a gentleman, uh, I think it's been a couple of years now, um, he went down, like bought a he, – and he lived in it. I forget, they have a term for that. Um, on the podcast, but he bought a, a fourplex and he lives house in hacking. it. So he bought house hacking. That's yeah. the word. Yes. Yeah. He's, he went in there. I, I don't, I, maybe he's bought another one since, but yeah. he lives in one unit, rents yeah. the other three out and yeah, those opportunities are out there. Uh, they, those. So especially if you're willing to live in the property, mm -hmm. that opens up a lot more opportunities. And I help pe a lot of people with that just because most of the people I talk to are friends. They're like, they're interested in that. The easiest way, if you want to get into real estate investing is to make it a primary. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the that's what I did with my my own house now. I, you know, that's another way you can do it because you get the best financing for it. Right, you know, it's got to be decent shape. Right, well, because it's low lower cost. The primary yeah. residents are going to less less money down. down on a house. Right, you know, it's, right, it's, it's, and that that is obtainable for most people, and that's a great place to start. To where then you have a proof of concept, and then you can go and look at the more creative ways. But I lo that's a, I recommend that everybody. Do and, that. and 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 if you did that. A year ago, yeah. here put five percent down or yeah. three and a half percent with FHA or something like that. Now you've you've got some equity. Now well, you, you could possibly stay, sell it, and yeah. now you have a little bit of, depending on well, how much equity you got. Yeah, finance it, pull cash out, and then go buy a property with it. Too. Exactly. So when you're, and I think this is the probably the biggest question for those listening that are up from the flipping side in, in knowledge. Tell me a little about your thought process when evaluating a home someone says hey or you've you've identified a home when you go and look at it what are you evaluating uh you know is this is this a worthwhile investment yep so obviously the first thing is the general area you know and you like if you give me a zip code i kind of know what we're talking about for the most part you know mm -hmm. if it's a single family house so the area is going to be the biggest thing and then pretty much without even seeing it I can get a general range of what it'd be worth in good condition before I even step foot. You see what kind of price they're looking at. And if there's a, a decent discrepancy, we'll look more into it. If there's not, we could still help them sell, but I don't put that, the flipping hat on, like going in there to try to see if it, it, it has, there has to be a discrepancy, an area you want to be in, mm -hmm. meaning an area you want to, you know, commit six months in your money into or more and a discrepancy between, the price that they're asking for and what you think you can actually get on the market. If right. there's, if that's not there, there's not, there's no more you can. Now, how important is it? Cause I think a lot of people as a, my wife and I did, we went into this house and we said, Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, the obvious things are, you know, cosmetic. Mm-hmm. We'll put new flooring in. No brainer. That could be done. You know, we're going to we're gonna paint it. There was one wall to open it up in uh, taking that out. Please do not take out walls unless you know <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah. This wall just happened to be a load-bearing oh, no. wall. Luckily, we go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever, and it had a nice pillar we yeah. could put in there. So that was a quick fix. <laughs> but if lovely. you take out a load-bearing wall, you yeah, may have some problems. Yeah. So if you're not a if you're not a licensed contractor, especially in, in our litigious society yeah. and getting permits to do certain things in, 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 on your home and so forth, when, when you talk to somebody in this, they, they learn that obviously you, you flipped homes. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure they ask you questions yeah. like we're yeah. doing here today. But what are some things you're like, you're probably not ready for just yet? I mean, that would be structural. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't, for your first one. They I think guess, you could do everything themselves. I mean, they, well, that's, so that's, that's a nightmare. Another thing is I don't, I'm not handy at all. Right. So I don't do anything myself. So I'm, I'm definitely not the person that uh, is going to go in and think. You put your sign in the front yard. I put, the, I run the numbers. And like, <laughs> I'll put it this way. If you have to, if you have to do the work, it's not a deal you should be buying. It's too thin. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's too, or unless it's for your own, you know, you want to do it because it's home you, you want to live in. Right. But if you're budgeting yourself doing work to save the 10% or 20%, like let the professionals do it. You're going to get more money anyway, because it's going to be done right. Correct. Plus, most of us have a day job that you can, but you're better served than. So I don't recommend doing much work other than like painting or stuff you like doing like that. But mm. so I don't do any of it uh, myself, mainly because I'm not skilled at all in any of it. <laughs> but but it's about running the numbers. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Not, but if you can if you can run the numbers and you know what you're going to sell for it and you have you you do know it, the general cost of those things. Though, once you do them enough, right. especially because you're using mostly the same vendors for all of these. Right. Um, you can you can put the pieces together and let them do it and kind of treat it as like a business. As, as do you have that that kind of the, that contractor you go to most of the time? You, I'm assuming you have some backups. So not it, that's tough actually. It's very tough to find good reliable contracting at a, at a reasonable price, especially when you're working with thinner you know thinner margins. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a lot of subcontractors like or, or the actual uh, like an AC technician, a plumber. Uh, a roofer, you know, I have kind of like the people I call, and then I have one general handyman that can do, you know, two of them that do most of the interior painting, flooring, and that type of thing. Right. Uh, but not one person uh, that kind of handles it all. I wish that'd be nice. Right. So when you go evaluate this property for the first time, you're looking at it going, okay, you know, yeah, they're they're offering, you know, well, what they want to sell it for is low enough. Yeah. If I fix it up, this is what it could, this house could get in this in this neighborhood for this right. amount. Okay, there there's the where do you start budging what your that the renovation is going to cost? I mean, do you start bringing in these guys to give you some numbers? So it depends. So if I'm say the first time I'm seeing the house, or like I have a, a general price, I can pretty you can ballpark what it's going to be, and then once I have it under contract, usually you know a one or two day inspection period, it's usually on point. Then I'll have them come in, but I don't. A lot of times you have to move so quick that you can't get all the answers. Like, you know, like an itemized report, you have to take a little bit of risk, which is why you need some room there. Because there's going to be the unseen things like you had on your property. It happens right. on all of them. Right. All, not that exactly. But there will be something that happens. You're going to open a wall and it's going to be. Something's going to happen. Termites so falling out. It's not if. It's it's just what it is on this property. Right. Um, but it's a ballpark. And then you, you kind of get, get your numbers. But if you're doing like your first one, I would recommend having at, at least somebody who has a gen, like a handyman at least that can give you a ballpark quote with you. Right. That's the safest way to do it when you get into the property. Inspections? You, I, If you're not going to have somebody come in with you that's going to quote the work, then I would recommend an inspection for sure. If it's a primary that you're turning into a, a flip or a rental, definitely get an inspection because uh, that's, you know, you don't want to get surprised in something you're living in that you're, you're not budgeting a flip for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would recommend always getting inspections and a contractor or one or the other if you don't have the time for both if it's like a you know something that's really competitive Mm -hmm. now i assume you know a lot of people watching you know maybe have never flipped it never sold a home they're not in you're not in our industry and they have to realize and i don't know if you i assume you would agree with this statement the demand on these contractors right now is so high that where you may think, oh, th- we can knock this out and we can turn this thing around in 60 days. No. 
Yeah, not, yeah not unless right you now. are a contractor, but that right. means you're not in our business. Right. So to you know, these contractors showing up on time, you know, and, and getting it done on the time, you know, you start running too too tight a schedule. Have you done that before? Kind of kind of rein yourself like I need to oh, sell yeah. this in so many days, and yeah. it's just not gonna it just didn't happen. Yeah, that definitely. This is probably the busiest they've ever been. So I mean, you need to budget the appropriate amount of time, especially because most of the if you're doing a flip, there's some cost to the amount of time you're holding it whether that's the loan that it's on, the taxes, the insurance, all of it goes up every month that you're holding it. So right. that is something to add into your line item when you're saying, I made 20, well, you held it for nine months and you ended up paying another $7,000. You know, you have to put all that in there. Um, but this is the busiest they've ever been. I, some of that, um, but that's why recently what I've been doing is working with other investors that have their own crew. They have a bigger operation than I do. Mm-hmm. So I, I find the deal, I'll partner with them and let kind of offload that part. And that's what I've been doing a lot this year. Um, Still have some that I've been piecing it out, but it, it definitely it was getting harder and harder to get reliable contractors, if, especially if you're not using them all the time. All the time. Right. You you're, you're not going flip to flip to flip. You don't have the next house waiting you gotta for them. you got to have them full so time, yeah. basically, to, to, to get yeah. that type of, of uh, you know, effort, I guess. A quick question from the audience. They said, have you had contractors that uh, think you don't know anything because you're not as handy as them and take advantage of the situation? What's your attitude towards that? That can definitely happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so second opinions is, will be your safest bet. But again, if we're going in this market, that sometimes is, you know, it's not realistic. So, you know, you have to, and by doing some, I mean, just because I'm not handy, I have a general idea of what each thing should cost, which you can find by even asking other contractors, you know, even if they're not there. And if they, you know, they're quoting a repipe on a 1200 square foot house and they say it's going to be 10 grand and you, you know, you can, you know, that by talking to other plumbers, it's, it should be five then I would put a hold on that and not commit to them. But you want to get a second opinion, at least verbally, and that they're usually going to be in the same general range. Mm-hmm. But that's a good question. And, and the question for the uh, so the podcast, if you didn't hear my Daniel reading that off, because he does not have a mic over there, was take, uh, um, contractors taking ad- advantage of you. So I want to kind of expand on that question a little bit from the standpoint of time frame. Because obviously, you know, you don't want to make that next mortgage payment. You know, every yeah. day is costing you money that you own that home that you want to flip. It's taking out of your profits because you're paying taxes or yeah. paying the next mortgage payment. Do you build in incentives to say, hey, if you finish it by the time you tell me you're going to finish it in 10 days, I'm going to pay you X amount. But every day, do you kind of put some parameters in there? Depending on the relationship I have with that vendor, I, I recommend doing that a uh, because of the demand right now, it's going to be a lot more, hey, this is what we want to get started type mm-hmm. of a situation. I definitely wouldn't give more than 30% up front. You know what I mean? Like try to keep the, you know, if you're not, if you if you can't do it by a time specific way, at least do it in tiers. So they have an incentive to finish just to get the majority of the money. Right. That way we do it a lot. Um, but yeah, if you can do it where, hey, if we're done in six months, I'll bonus you this much because I'm saving, you know, X amount. That's a great way to do it. I would assume, especially for maybe a little bit more intricate renovations. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, someone coming and put an AC unit, yeah. they're coming in and putting the AC unit in as fast as, reason, you know, yeah, they want to the get past paid. one, get yeah, paid. Yeah, yeah. So, if, and, and if you're just starting, I would shy away from the really big renovations or partner with another investor, still get in on the deal, but let them help you through the process. That's another great way to get started. So, th- all right, so that segments me into something we talked about a little bit earlier, and because Alan does have this experience. He even knows people that are been more experienced than him that he partners with when he feels maybe you're over your head or whatever, yeah. but you got the deal. So if someone, uh, you know, might be out there in Green Coast Springs or Palatka right now where you're not traveling on a daily basis because yeah. you're up here in Jacksonville, but they have a house or listen to the show and say, you know what, uh, this might be a house you may want to flip. Yep. How does you know someone referring you that home? Mm-hmm. Maybe they're 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 just want to say, hey, you know, hey, I got this opportunity. Yeah. Um, how do they? How can they make some money just just being a referral? So a lot of ways actually. So if if someone set, finds a deal and they want to learn the process, then they they can be a partner. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have the deal, you that's a that's that's it. That's the the hardest part. Um, so there, one of the ways you can do it is, um, we both purchase the property if, or they can get an incentive for it on the back end when they, when it closes as an owner, and then they get kind of a front row seat to how it's flipped without using any of their own money. 
worrying about the contracting, worrying about anything, but they're able to kind of go through the process and still flip the house, and then maybe on the next one they can do it themselves because they've seen it. They, they're doing it themselves. All right, you said something there to just cut my thought. So, for instance, someone has a home, maybe, you know, they just they don't have the cash. Yeah. Uh, the house needs a lot of work, but obviously it's fixed up. There's enough margin in there yeah. to make it worthwhile to be a flip for you. Sure. They call you and say, hey, this is what I would like to do. I'd like to get X. Yeah. Sell you the house for X, but I'm going to refer. I'm calling you because I know you could sell this for more, but I don't have the finances or the whereabouts to fix it up. Right? Can you cut that? You you buy it from them for here, but you're going to turn around and sell it for there. Could they actually you know work with you to get a little uh, finder's fee, maybe an extra few thousand dollars because yes. they're you know you're working out with them. Like before, so you're like kind of get a little fee, but like, hey, here's the deal, mark it up a little bit to me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. It's like a wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. You have to be right, wholesale. That's the correct. Yeah. You have to be careful how you do it, though. So if you don't have a real estate license, it's tricky to get paid legally like that. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to do it. Like they can do an assignment of contract, but it, that's a little more sophisticated of a way to if if someone's just kind of not really knowing what they're doing. But an assignment would work. Um, if they don't do that and they just bring the opportunity, then they can get paid and you know, out of the, the back end of the deal, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they can become a partner of it. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways they can do it. It just has to be structured. Right. So if they bring me a deal, we say, okay, wh what's your goal? Is your goal just to get a few thousand dollars and be out? Then this is how we do it. Is your goal to learn how to, you want to be part of the flip? Then we'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. But if you've had the deal, you, you can kind of get what you need as long as it's, as, you know, the, there's enough there for you to get what you want. So, so there's plenty of creative ways yeah. that you, that uh, in your experience, so for those out there, you know, look at, you may have uh, down the street from you, a house is, you know, may be in this situation yeah. where, um, and, and, and like I said, there's plenty still in St. Augustine, mm -hmm. uh, especially in old town where they're, they're still going into areas of Lincolnville. Where mm -hmm. These houses are literally, I don't even understand how they're even still standing, yeah. but they're still flipping one by one by one right, down right. there yeah. and so forth. Ton of, I think there's a ton of opportunity on the other side of the river is, and, and, and obviously downtown, the older areas of downtown ja Jacksonville, to, um, to call Alan, mm -hmm. get him to come out and consult you on the, on the deal. Maybe you inherited this house that was grandma's and it just needs a total gut. Yeah. Or just give advice. I mean, if you just want advice, I don't mind even talking you through it to see, you know, kind of what right. the best route is. Uh, I mean, it's like a hobby. You know, I enjoy yeah, it. yeah. Because well, there's opportunity everywhere, yeah. whether that that deal or someone you know uh, learns from you and then can refer you something else, or maybe you they call you to represent the, you on the sale, on sale. Yeah, uh, when it's done, and, and to kind of get some money back on the consultation and yeah. and your expertise. Um, you 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 obviously talk to a lot of you know, people. You're in the in the flipping. Um, how important is that? Is it to have either a good day job mm. where cash flow is coming in, yeah, yeah. Um, or some savings? Because I met I, I talk to a lot of people from the lending side where they want to buy a flip, but they want they want little no money down. It's like that's really, yeah, yeah, holy grail. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, So, and you can get into flipping with you know, less money, but that's going to be going the partner route. Somebody has to have, the, is bringing the money though, even mm -hmm. if you're getting a loan. Uh, typically it's like 20% and that's, you know, 20 to 30% depending on the type of, of loan you're doing. If it's not a primary, you know, if you're not right. doing a primary. So having uh, a W-2 helps a lot for that. Cause, or you could be self-employed as long as you're, you know, showing everything that you need to, right. but you need to have income to get the loan, at least initially. Um, and just from a cash flow perspective, you're talking usually three to uh, probably my average is about seven months from purchase to sold. Um, so you need something to get you through those seven months to, right. you know, it, it, you have to have the rehab budget already there. You know, you don't want to have to be waiting on it. So budgeting appropriately is, is crucial to keep you going basically. Right. Yeah. You have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've gotten over the years in a lot of calls, and there there are situ there are some renovation loans out there yeah. that you can definitely purchase a home with, mm -hmm. and do some. But the the you know, FHA has theirs, uh, you know, in, in intending which one you go with. It's more restrictive than others. Yeah. It won't. There's certain things it will do and won't do. Right. Uh, but we're right there as the lender. We got to go out and inspect and all this stuff. Stuff. It's, if you're trying to do it for actual a cash return, right. 
um, and flip it in three months or something like that or six months or whatever it may be. Um, I think you would agree it's, it's probably best to you know consult someone like you who yeah. knows some of these what we call hard money lenders are looking for yeah. short term can you know turn around and flip it maybe the first couple I mean, you, you just get a you, know, you become the partner yeah. and get your get your cut to kind of get a feel for what's going on and learning the business especially if you don't have any money in your pocket today yeah um, primary residents are harder you, you, if you don't have a lot of money down you're putting a little bit of money yeah if you go and spend all do all this work and invest the money yeah the house will be worth that much more but that doesn't mean you have all this equity you just spent all this you just right. took a the, the extra money out of the loan to fix the house up the way you want to yeah. live in it yeah if you're so there's no that, profitability per se yeah you want to make sure that if you're going to do a primary you know especially like a, a renovation loan which i tried doing one once and it was so difficult that i just said i'm, I'm not doing that anymore mm -hmm. we just went to a conventional uh which is where i live now you want to make sure that it's worth doing that you don't want to buy a house just to have it Put into it what it's worth on the market today so you always want to make sure you're getting a discount unless for, you plan to live in it and you love the neighborhood and you're gonna be yeah, there long term exactly, right but if, for, if you're thinking for investment purposes i wouldn't do it just thinking it's going to appreciate like oh, you want some margin because it's a lot of work and you need to be compensated for that time or you're, you're going to feel like it wasn't worth it uh, for a short flip like a short like i'm going to buy it and sell it under a year i would go with a hard money loan um, i would partner on a deal which is what we just talked about um, or I would use private funds, but that you get once you have experience because that's that's going to be the best terms, the best everything. But you, typically, you need some experience with it, mm -hmm. which you can get by partnering. Now you have that experience. experience, then you go do it yourself, and it snowballs, and, and that's that's how you can really catch fire. So, what is just uh, on, a, on a typical situation, and I'm sure different hard money lenders, you, you yeah. know, you probably have a, you know know a handful yeah. that have slightly different criteria, yeah. but what's what's kind of a standard mm -hmm. uh, that they're looking for when they're doing this type of thing? So for a hard money loan, typically you're gonna want, they're gonna wanna see experience, which is the toughest criteria, because you're like, well, how do I get experience if nobody, you know, everybody wants experience. Mm. Uh, so having something that shows that you've done it before, not all of them, you know, recently they've loosened up because, you know, that people are just trying to get uh, their money out there. Mm -hmm. But you want some experience, um, Usually twenty to thirty percent is what they want down still. So it doesn't change, it doesn't change the amount down that you need. That's not why I'm recommending that. It's the the qualifications that you need are pretty much that's it. So you need to have a decent credit score, like six twenty or higher. That's you know not nothing crazy. Um, mm -hmm. You need to find the funds, which they don't care if it's your funds or someone else's funds, by the way, for that. But you do need the twenty or thirty percent down. Right. The they need to know if you walk away from the deal, they got. Yeah, 30, the, 20, 30 percent equity in the house. Yeah, so, yeah. so they're, they're they're safe, um, but and then it's all about the deal. So it's much easier to get that than it would be to get like a renovation loan for sure. Um, but that's pretty much what it's going to be. And then you're looking at an interest only payment while you hold the property, averagely between ten and thirteen percent is what you're paying per month with mm -hmm. about a, a one to two points up front. That's mm -hmm. what you can get right now. So. What is the typical turn time that they want that money, or is they, they judge it on the property and the size of the project and the return that they may get? All of that. So it depends on the on the particular hard money loan. You can kind of negotiate this, but the longer it goes, you know, usually there's a, some type of penalty if you go over their their timeline. But uh, one year is typical. I don't like the six month ones. It's too that's too short. If anything goes wrong, you're at, you're going to end up having to rebuy in, which means you got to buy the points, you got to do the whole thing. Technically, they can foreclose on it. So if you have a predatorial type situation, so I like one year. That mm -hmm. gives you some room. If you have to rent it and refinance it, it gives you the time to do that too, to where you can, you know, you can get them that first lien off the property. So I like one year or more. Mm -hmm. That's uh, sure, surely a safe play because I know a lot of people dream as, as me and my wife says, oh yeah, we'll turn this around in no. 30, 60 days. A year later, <laughs> we sold that home and. and uh, there was things in that area, and I could go on, but I'm I'm telling you, you got to go with your eyes wide open. But I think most importantly, you need to call on an experienced uh, person like Alan, who's here on the show. He's going to give his phone number. Uh, you know, reach him online or whatever. However, we get there, but consult him, and he knows people even smarter than him that you may oh, yeah. not have access to, but he does because he's done this. You've done this yeah. enough time. You yeah. are, uh, you know, a, a seasoned guy from the <laughs> standpoint of of the standpoint of flipping. So if it's something you're looking to get into, so uh, Alan, what, what's a good number that they should reach out to you? 
So you can call my cell phone, 954-802-1305. Um, you can shoot me a text, and I'd be happy to give anybody advice on it because it's really a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So he's willing to teach. Um, we got a question? Yes, um, two questions. What about flipping land? Flipping land. Uh, have, you, have you had much experience with that? So I've, not me personally, um, I'm not a big fan of flipping land because there's less variables you can control. So you're pretty much making an appreciation play. I like that as one aspect when I'm buying. Like, is this area going to go up in value? I don't mm -hmm. like that to be the only aspect I have because if it doesn't go up, you're not, that's your, that's your only. It's plan. really for someone who's just, Hey, I need cash now. I'm willing to sell it for half its actual value. Cause I want to check right now. It, that's the only way I would do that. Yeah. It's, it's gotta be severely under market. Cause you don't have a lot of ways to uh, offload it. I mean, you're, it's a, it's a particular buyer. All right. Two full question. And it says, what about uh, putting a property on that land and reselling it? So now, so now you're talking about development. That's a different, that's a whole different thing. If you have the connections now, that's a very sophisticated play that you, definitely need to do your research on before you do that mm -hmm. um but if if you have the connections to develop and the price works for the area then i then go for it that's a different play but buying land by itself i'm not a fan of some people do that putting putting the house on it i would think is um someone would have already done that i mean there's plenty of money around and that's the thing there's no like I'm not sure you would agree. There's no, there's none of these big golden nuggets laying around because there are plenty of people that are in this area that have your experience They're or scouting. more, yeah. have cash, they have the contractors, they can stroke the check, boom. You know, I I, I had a, a experience um, with one of my teammates um, years ago. One of these down in Lincolnville, the wood there. I mean, would be artwork in, in some place because it was so old and whatever. What was left of the house that yes, was there, yes. they were they were going in and of course it was a renovation loan um, because they took the what was this? It re basically built a whole new house around it, and we're going to use it for an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. There's people like that that have that kind of money yep. that uh, can pay you know a hundred plus thousand dollars for that lot because that's really yeah. all it was. There was that dwelling was wasn't nothing. there. Yeah. So you, there's really no good. So to buy, to have land, put a house on it, and and sell it, yeah, I guess the the cost to construct. But right now, cost of construction is that's, so high. That's thing. And, and you know, you have to just you have to really know your your numbers for that. If mm -hmm. the numbers work, go for it because it's it, why not? You yeah, know, there's, there's, money. There's, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. And last one, uh -huh. it says, Al, Alan, how many investments have you done so far? Are they all the same kind of deal? And also. Howard says, what's up? <laughs> okay. Um, so the type of deals that I guess that he's worked with, have they all been similar or? Uh, for the most part, they've been, I mean, they're all in Jacksonville, so they're all localized. Um, I, I haven't done anything really that I've been a part of outside of Jacksonville. Um, not all exactly the same. Most, mostly single family homes, uh, older homes. I think most of the homes I bought are from the 50s, mm -hmm. 40s and 50s, because they're all in the, Murray Hill, Avondale, a lot of those in Arlington, a lot mm -hmm. of old, older areas where, where typically that's that's where the issues come up and, you know, people need, they're in situations where they need to sell. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, that's been the deal. And I would say probably in the 20s, maybe 30, as far as deals I've even either flipped myself or, or with, with different partners. Um, and then obviously a lot of just transactional deals, working with buyers and sellers, uh, probably close to 100 I would think of those mm -hmm. so I've seen a lot um, you know I'm not the smartest guy so if I've been able to figure out it's, it's definitely it, you can do it I mean, it's, some of those older homes uh, that you experience I mean you, some of these you're going in and you're you're replacing plumbing yeah oh, most some of the sewer <laughs> pipes I imagine if they yeah, are yeah. Uh, attached you're having to, to do those yep. there's a lot of things that you need to really consider which is kind of what it's kind of a relieving to buy an old house because you can kind of just say okay you know, we're going to have to replumb it. We're going to have to do the, so you got, you just factor that in mm -hmm. and it's not this big mystery, but you, uh, you should assume on those houses, especially when they're, when there's a lot of deferred maintenance, they probably didn't touch the plumbing, the things you can't see. Right. They probably didn't, you know, it's a lot of them have knob and tube wire, you know, uh, electric going on. So, uh, it's just things that you can learn, you can easily learn and, and you get, you know, good at quick and you can analyze the property and, um, and, you know, make an educated decision on it. So I, I just want to wrap up. So and from this standpoint, call Alan. Okay. If you're thinking about flipping a home, you may have a house in a, he has no problem consulting you. If you're already on the front end of the deal, he'll consult you. If you want to partner with him, 
he will partner, or I'm sure if you don't want to partner, maybe you have someone yeah, you would oh, refer to sure. partner with him. Or if they need if that's you know, do. money sources, that, that's a big one too. Utilize him. He has a passion about flipping and, and obviously a bunch of insight. And again, like any of us, we don't know everything, but he does know people that right. probably know some of those areas that he doesn't know sure. to, fill in, to fill in the gap. So I want to go to my two-minute warning questions. You're just generic, have fun uh, here. Is it more important who you know or what you know? I actually think who you know, yeah. Um, it, just in my experience, um, the majority, where I've gotten the furthest is uh, through people that are, you know, be, been able to teach me or better than me at, and I've definitely excelled more with the people that. I, mm-hmm. that and then making the connections, like having these yeah. hard money lenders, yeah, who everything. you know, they don't just fall out of the tree. No. Someone introduces you. you. It, it kind of snowballs, so I, I would say who you know. So you're out on the town looking for something fun to do with your wife, Jumbo Shrimp, or the Jaguars? Jaguars. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's on your travel bucket list? Um, hmm. Besides Columbia, I missed yeah. his wedding, he missed his destination wedding in Columbia because of COVID. Yeah, so we, we do want to go. I have family that's from Columbia, so we, we definitely want to go to Columbia when kind of things cool down. Uh, Europe, you know, we want to do Europe. Uh, my wife's family is planning uh, the Alaskan cruise trip. In, I want to do something like that. Yeah. So we just put a deposit down for that. That's in 20, it's like in a, two years from now, though. Um, so that, that will do that. So we have some fun things that we're looking forward to. Yeah, I, I definitely want to, uh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's, you know, we talked about the cruise yeah. I'm taking at Thanksgiving. But, you know, while the kids are young, um, you know, and now they're, they're old enough or, you know, getting here in the next couple of years yeah. to, you know, get out because there's some adventure, whether it's hiking. There's, there's a lot of the cruise lines have got some interesting things oh, up yeah. there. And if, obviously, if you're going to visit Alaska, yeah. um, you know, although I w- do watch that show, uh, well, not Naked and Afraid, but <laughs> it's out, out in the middle of nowhere, Alaska, where they're like, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, they're so far north inside the Arctic Circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> outside shows. I find that interesting how they live up there. But yeah. Alaska Cruise is, is definitely something on my list. But um, now I talked before, before the show. I've, I've got I've even got his original book, Ryan Serhant here. Um, his big money energy yep. as a gift. I don't want to clip my wire awesome. here, but there we go. Big money energy. Ryan Serhant's a great read. So, as your gift for Perfect. coming on Thank the you. show, I appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, I, I want to, you know, even if it's a yearly basis, come on and, and yeah. uh, tell us some stories about some recent flips that you made done. Absolutely. Some some uh, obstacles. You know, everyone uh, wants to know that. But um, I'm, you know, the one thing I didn't ask you is the rewarding part of it when you actually finish yeah. that home. And I can only imagine when, you know, that prospective homeowner, now you're showing the home. Yeah. And they walk in, and for a lot of them, this is their first home. Yeah. Am I agree. Uh, I mean, most of them, yeah, are in that first home buyer price range. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and they've got a home. It's got a new, typically a new AC unit, yeah. new appliances. Yeah. You know, it's up to date right. with all the latest stuff uh, after the flip. And, and I'm, I would imagine is that one of the most rewarding parts of it? Definitely. Um, yeah, especially knowing where it came from to what, and like, you know, what it is. And that, that doesn't get old, that part mm-hmm. of it. So uh, that keeps you going because there are definitely challenges. I don't want to paint it like now, can I? I'm going to give you, can I, I don't know if there, this may be out there. I don't know if it is, but I, because I obviously always like to research. And I wanted to see uh-huh. if there was something I didn't know about you online. So, um, you know, LinkedIn didn't seem to have you on there. No. Um, Straight to real estate. Your, <laughs> your Facebook <laughs> needs a little yeah, uh, freshening up. Yeah. 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 Um, what I would, I would just recommend whether it's Instagram or I would Instagram and Facebook is to put those photos on there. How you, because I think, you know, uh, facts tell stories sell and those, those photos have stories and I think it would explode your business. Hopefully people on here are going to call you because they're, they need consultation or they want to partner with you. And obviously it can mean more business for you. That would, that would be my, cause I was looking for stuff like that. I was thinking about, man, these great stories and these (laughs) houses and the great things you've done with them. So But uh, appreciate you coming on today. Absolutely. Uh, we got his number, right? You want to give it one more time? Yep. 954-802-1305. Get a hold of Alan. Get consulted on your on your next flip. Thanks, folks.